everyone, Angela here. Life can be challenging, trust me, I get it. However, I have learned we can either view the opposition or value the opportunity. Ponder on the problem or praise the potential. Focus on the situation or find the solution. Despite the current circumstances you're going through, I invite you to join me today as we embark on a grand adventure to discover the reasons why it's a good time to be here. Here's the encourager herself, making every day a good day, Angela Henderson. Welcome, everyone. Welcome. We are so glad you're here today. Turn to your neighbor and say, it's a good time to be you. Yes, yes, and it is. We are so excited to have you with us today. Today is a great day. It's the day the Lord has made, and so we're going to rejoice and be glad in it. I'm so glad that you're here. We are beginning to consider you guys like family. You know, there is nothing like family, and there's no place like home. But what do you do whenever you begin to feel a little unsafe in that environment? Today we have with us a very special guest. Her name is Shemaya Vickers, and she's going to be sharing with us some losses that she's experienced throughout her life through something that's all too familiar in our world today, domestic violence. But she's going to show how she has become an overcomer in that area and how she is now helping other people who may be going through those things and helping to make her world a better place. And even the career that she stepped into, which is nurturing many people. So don't go away. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everyone. Thank you for being with us today on our show, It's a Good Time to Be You. At this time, we want to welcome our special guest today, Ms. Shamaya Vickers. Come on out, Shamaya. Yay. Thank you so much for being with us today. It's a pleasure to see you. Have a seat right here. We are just so excited to have you with us. Um, it was just a few weeks ago you were a part of our audience, yes. and now here you are being able to actually share your story with us today, and so right. how amazing that is. And I um, feel very honored to have you with us, a, a wonderful woman who is doing some amazing things. She's got an amazing family. Yes. Uh, she's been sharing with me a lot um, about her life, and so we are excited to be able to share and inspire you today with Shemaya and her life. So why don't you tell us a little bit about um, yourself and a little bit about your background and your family. Okay, so I am a registered nurse here in the Low Country. I work downtown in USC. Thank you um, for just giving and serving <laughs> so beautifully. I have been on this journey. I originally started in 2014, graduated 2016, and I've been there ever since. Um, I'm a mom of four and now a grandmother. Oh my Lord, look at you. <laughs> Grandma's rock, don't we? I'll yes. tell you what, I told my mom, I said, you know, there's nothing like being a grandmother. Yes. My mom says, well, I've one up to you. I'm a great grandmother. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm enjoying the grand part. You yes. look amazing. Thank you. Thank and how you. old is your grandbaby? So he is four months old today. Oh, congratulations. Yes. And I'm in love. He's adorable. Yes. 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 There's nothing yes. like it. Yes. Oh. Oh, well, tell yes. us a little bit more. Um, so uh, I am a Navy wife as well. Oh, My husband has been serving. Thank you again for your service. <laughs> and I think we've got husband with us yes. today, right? Mr. Anthony, thank yes. you for being with us. Thank you for your service. He's been serving for 14 and a half years with the Navy. Um, he's a submariner, a chief. Um, we've been on this journey of long time. Wow. <laughs> well, we're almost there. He's going to make it a career and retire. That's beautiful. And how many years have y'all been married? Uh, we have been married since May 2007. Oh, that is great. <laughs> so, yeah, but we've been friends before that, and yeah. that's a funny story, but uh, we were friends prior to, and it was like, you know what, we've been best friends. Let's try dating, and then now we're here. So. Nothing like marrying your best friend, <laughs> I tell you. I'm a witness to that myself. But, you know, 2007 is pretty cool because um, when we break it up into 20 and and then seven. Mm -hmm. um, the number 20 represents redemption. 
and the number seven represents the perfection of God. And so I believe that the paths that you guys had walked on, even together as best friends, um, just coming into that union and that deciding, okay, we're going to partner for the rest of our lives. You know, it was just divine. It yeah. was the perfect order of God. And he was just even bringing about some redemption and maybe some things that you guys had to walk through, which right. we're getting ready to go into um, as you begin to share your story. Yes. But um an interesting thing about you is that you found out um, in your life that you were not actually raised by your birth parents, That's right? Correct. You were adopted. Yes. So tell me a little bit about that. So at the age of seven, um, my mom had a counselor come in and speak with me because I, if my memory serves me right, I think I was having some challenges dealing with the death of my father, um, which I know now is my adopted father. He passed away due to throat cancer. Wow. So she had the counselor come in and speak with me and tell me that this is not your birth family. This is your adopted family. Um, and I, I, I still don't remember exactly how I felt, but it was just out of sorts. And I felt like that made sense as to why I felt kind of disconnected at times mm. when I would be around my family and not knowing that I was the adopted kid and that might be why they didn't latch on to me wow. or feel a certain way towards me so because of that. All most of your childhood then, even at such a young age, you were feeling that there Out was something source. different. Yes, I could tell. Okay. Yeah. Well, you know, and I, and God designs us in such very unique ways. Um, and so I'm sure that there was this knowing inside of you that there was something that that was missing, mm -hmm. you know, that was a part of you. So now when you discovered this, was it just like, oh, okay, now my life makes sense? Or what happened after well, that discovery? <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it was just, you kind of, I kind of carried it along. I yeah. didn't love my mother any less because of this, but it was just always a question in my mind, okay, where are my roots? Where did I come from? Where's my bloodline? Who do I look like? Yes. Where are my siblings? Am I walking past my siblings right now or my wow. cousins right now and I don't know it? So it was just the questions that I didn't have answers to. Right. And these are some questions that probably many of you have had yourselves. And so we're so glad to have Shamaya with us. And she's going to be sharing a little bit more with us. But first, we're going to take a really quick break. So don't go away. We'll be right back. Hey, everyone. Angela here. Just wanting to invite you to share your story with us. You know, we all have times in our lives when it just seemed like it was impossible, but then there was that moment of breakthrough. And just maybe your story was meant to be shared and imparted to be able to encourage and uplift others. Well, we would love to be able to give you that opportunity. So how about send your story into us at it's a good time to be you at gmail.com for consideration. We would love the opportunity to be able to bring you up on stage so that you can do what you were designed to do. And that was to be an encouragement to those around you. You know, sometimes you just can't make this stuff up. But when it happens, we want the world to know about it. So again, reach out to us at it's a good time to be you at gmail.com and send in that story for us to consider. And remember, it's a good time to be you. Welcome back, everyone. Thank you so much for being with us today. You know, loss is difficult, especially in family and with those that are um, close to you. And when violence is involved, um, it makes a lasting impact in our life. And right now we have with us a very special guest, Shemaya Vickers, who is sharing with us just some experiences and losses in life. And, um, you know, um, while we were on break, we were discussing the many blessings that God has um, given you through your family, four children and a grandbaby. And um, I shared with you that the number four actually means productive and of the earth. And so your life is truly productive despite, you know, the losses that you experienced. Um, but prior to going to the break, we had um, talked about the fact that you were adopted yes. and that you experienced the loss of your adopted father, mm -hmm. even at the age of four, yes. you know? And so again, going back to that number four, it means productive and of the earth. Nothing in our life happens out of happenstance. It, there's always a reason for it. Um, that's even why we use the term around here, it's a good time to be you, because we are not coming into, you know, belittling anything that you've walked through, but we are coming into an agreement with God's purpose for it. Mm -hmm. Because not all good things happen to us, but he says, I will take all things and I will make them good. And so 
not only had you at this age had experienced the loss of your adoptive father, but there was even more losses that were taking place because losses that you didn't realize you had because now you had a birth family, right. you know, that you were now grieving that you didn't realize you had, but right. everything's starting to make a little bit of sense now. And so there was that. But why don't you share with us and just take us down the journey of the other familiar losses that happened in your life from that point on? Um, so during nursing school, which is already a tumultuous time because it's so intense yeah. and it takes a lot away from you because you're literally at school, clinical, roundabout, and still balancing out life. I'm I'm still in with kids, he's in and out, going out to sea. So it was a lot to handle. Um, and I remember one day pulling up to clinical um, at Trident Medical Center, and my mom called me and said that one of my favorite uncles had passed. Mm. Um, it was it was kind of unexpected, but expected, because he was sick, but I wasn't expecting to lose him so quickly. Right. Um, and then not long after that, I lost my brother due to complications from um, one of the uh, terrible disease which is HIV AIDS um, we weren't that close because he was older but me and his children are close yeah. which which I still hold on to them and as well as my um, my his daughter's daughter is like Aww. my little my little sister because she looks <laughs> up to me yes. so um, and then after that I lost another uncle and then shortly after that, I lost my mother-in-law due to domestic violence. So it was just a lot to deal with and digest in your mind because it was just loss after loss. And you have to kind of suppress your emotions and move forward because I didn't have time to let it settle. Because if I did, I wouldn't have been successful in nursing school. Yeah. So... Wow. And, you know, disease is it's hard and it's difficult, um, you know, to deal with. Right. A lot of times, though, we realize that sometimes there, there will be an end to that, you yes. know. And so you know that that's kind of expected. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, with some of the others that you mentioned, there was that expectancy, maybe not quite as soon as it happened. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to the violent part of things, that's just totally it takes you by surprise. Yes. And um, explain to me and our um, friends here, what was going on in your life at that time and how did you feel about that? And this was not just your loss, was right. it? Right. This impacted not only me, but my husband because I had to be his support system as well as his brother's. Because yeah. it was a lot happening during this time. Um, and she was a beautiful person. When mm. I say you can't even imagine her being angry. She was just so sweet, always. Like, and just, she was a mother in law that you dream of. I hear friends say, Oh my God, my mother in law's the worst. She's evil. She's the devil. She doesn't want me with her son. She would, the only Monster thing that, yes, the only thing that she would pick up me about was, You stole my baby because I'm two years older than him. Oh, but my other goodness. than that, like, I never had any quarrels with her. We always understood each other's place. I always respected her so highly. Yes. Coming to her for advice, what it was never a worry. So she was just a beautiful person. You know, that's so beautiful to have that in your life. Um, I feel very honored as well. My husband's mother is amazing. Mm -hmm. And um, I've never felt like a daughter-in-law. Right. Um, I've always felt like, you know, the daughters she, she loves. Mm -hmm. um, she, they don't have daughters. They just had two sons. And Aww. so, yeah. So, yeah, so she was. She yeah. only had three boys. So, there, so you yes. were the daughter-in-law. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like that a lot. Yes. So um, share with us what happened. During this time, uh, it it was a lot. I was in nursing school and I was getting ready to prepare for like one of my toughest classes and we got a phone call from another family member and my husband, I spoke to him about it and it was kind of like one of those things where you're in shock, you don't want to believe it, even yeah. though you know it could be possibly happening. Right. So I was distraught as well, trying to pack up myself. It was just, a, I felt like I was in a whirlwind, like yeah. time stopped and trying to hurry but get to them because the location where they are in Georgia is four hours from where we are. Wow. That's so it's getting four again. Jeez. So it, it was just it was it was hard to think about in the moment of, of trying to get there. Now thankfully at the time he was stationed uh, about uh, about two hours from where they lived. Yeah. So it took him less time to get to her yeah. and to find out what was going on. And of course, someone else that I was connected to sent me a news feed showing of the police lined wow. up on this road. Wow. They had a situation where they think it's a murder-suicide. They're not sure who's in the building, blah, 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 blah. So 
of course, we confirmed once he got there, talked to the policeman, and they took him in and showed that it was her that this happened to. So I got there and met him at his grandmother's house, and I, I just did what I could to support him at that time. Yes. And it, it was still just, a, it was just feeling like you're frozen in time. Like, yes. did this really just happen, and why? Yes. So sad and, and, and such a loss, right. truly a loss. Right. Um, but with your relationship with you and your husband, right. how did that, you know, um, affect that? Well, it, it was, it was, it just empowered us. Yes. Because we, we were already close. So yes. just to have that support and to say, whatever you need, I hear. I know I'm in school, but I'm, I'm going to be right here. Literally in the next room, getting ready right. to prepare for her funeral at his family member's house. I was in the room studying. I would let him be in the room with his family, yes. and I would be, I'm right here. I'm studying, but I'm right here. I'm not moving. See, amazing partnership. Yeah. Again, family yeah. and relationship. And um, and when God's on your side and you're on God's side, right. it just doubly you know, solidifies that strength and that power. And you guys were truly... Um, the, what you needed to be for one another right. during that time of loss. Right. Well, we're going to go to a break, okay. and when we come back, we're going to hear a little bit more of something that you recovered yes. in all these losses, so don't go away. Hey, as a leader, you are a broker of gifts. So whether you are a professional, a business owner, or a ministerial leader, I would love to accompany you in transforming your ordinary staff into an extraordinary team through leadership development, team building, and personal discovery. You will learn the amazing gifts, skills, and talents that each of you have and know how to bring them together in order to do great things. So reach out to me at AngelaDHenderson.com and let's begin your amazing adventure today. And remember, it's a good time to be you. Welcome, everyone, and we're so glad that you're with us today. We have with us Shamaya Vickers, our guest, and our friend, um, and she is just sharing with us an incredible story of just how she survived losses um, throughout her life, um, and one being with domestic violence. But as we were leaving and getting ready um, to go on our commercial break, we kind of began to tap into, in the midst of these losses though, there was something that you regained. So why don't you share with us about how you got reconnected with your birth family? How did um, that happen? It, it was it was literally, <laughs> I know it was divine because I wasn't even intentional in of this. I just did it as a way to say, this is going to be another route for me to try because Previously, I tried to say I was going to get a private investigator, do all these things that would cost me thousands of dollars, and I kind of got flustered because I was like, I can't really afford this right now, so I'm just going to leave it alone. Yeah. Um, and I sent off a DNA testing, and it pinged me back and sent me an email and said that I was possibly linked up with someone that could possibly be a first cousin to okay, me. Okay, so you're telling us that these things probably actually work, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this okay, is, so these these, these are legitimate. These, yes, okay, these things. Ancestry .com yeah, or whatever. Like, right. It, yeah. It's legitimate. Amazing. So, yeah, I okay. sent it off. It pinged me <clears throat> and said that this person could possibly be a second or first cousin to you. So huh. I was like, okay, well, let's see if this is real. And I sent him a message. I said, I know this is weird, but I'm, I sent you, you know, I sent him all my things and said, hey, this is what happened to me. I hope this, you know, doesn't feel weird to you. But hey, I, I have a story of this is when I was born. This is what happened. And we connected. And he said, you know what? I'm going to get back with you because you could possibly be my aunt's daughter. Wow, Shamaya. Yeah. Now, um, earlier uh, when we were talking, yes. you had shared with me privately um, that you were actually premature yes. in your birth, yes. right? And that your um, adoptive family was able to take you in at about what, what? I was about 14 days old. 14 days mm -hmm. old, okay. And so the number 14 represents a deliverance and a release. And so I really do believe, um, we had even privately even talked a little bit about a Moses yes. situation. And I really do believe that, you know, Moses was named Moses because he was withdrawn from the Nile. He was delivered mm -hmm. from the Nile and his life was marked by that because he was sent back as a deliverer. And right. so I really believe that it's similar for you. You were delivered, mm -hmm. okay, from a situation, right. but then you were sent back, right. you know, as you went back to find your family in the midst of all of this. You're mm -hmm. a very tenacious woman. It's like once you set your mind to doing something, yes. 
yes. uh, you're going to do it. And your birthday again? December 2nd. December 2nd. And the number December, uh, the month of December represents a time of peace. It also represents ruling and reigning, a time of governing, an authority, so to speak. And, you know, when Moses went back, he went back with authority mm -hmm. um, whenever he went back to deliver and set free. And so I really believe that you are an authoritarian just because of the different things that you've walked through. You have gained experience, but also wisdom, mm -hmm. you know, from that. And yes. we had mentioned um, in our private conversations, her name Shemaya, meaning pure and, and exalted and high. And so, you know, when we walk through these times with the Lord, he says, you know, if you'll suffer with me, you'll reign with me. Yes. And so now he has, you know, placed you in some heavenly places with him yes. um, to be able to go back and really do some good things mm -hmm. here. So what was it like when you got reconnected with your birth mother? It, it just felt, mm -hmm. it felt like a relief. Yeah. Like this is the person that birthed me. And I had no hard feelings towards her, no animosity. And she was relieved to find that out because she thought I hated her. Wow. And I said, no, I never hated you. I just wanted to know where I come from. Who do I look like? Where where are my roots? Like, where does my smile come from? Where does oh. my character come from? The things that everybody else has. They could say, oh, well, I, I do this like my mom. I didn't know where it came from. Yeah. So Could you was, see some family resemblance? Oh, yeah. You saw oh, her? yeah, most definitely. <laughs> when we took our first little selfie together, it was like, oh, my God, y'all look twins. <laughs> so, I yeah. Love yeah, yeah. I yeah. love it. Yeah. Now, had she had any other children um, after? Yes. So, I am the next to the baby. So, wow. I have uh, two big brothers, yes. an older sister, and then I have a baby sister. How beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, you were chosen. Um, for the, this path, mm -hmm. you know, that you've walked. And I love it because I really feel that when, when we walk down a certain path, it's because God has full confidence in the work that he's doing in us. And he knows the plans that he's made for us. And he says that our footsteps are ordered by him. And so you were chosen, you know, for this experience. Mm -hmm. And he knew that he could trust you right. to get out of it what you were supposed to get out of it and that his work in you, you know, would be completed. Mm -hmm. And so I really feel like I'm hearing him say, well done, daughter, well mm -hmm. done, you know, in this stage yes. of what I have for you. And now he has taken you into a new level. So that's pretty cool. Well, when we get back, we're going to wrap things up and we're going to hear just a little bit more about what she's doing in the now. So please don't go away. And remember, it's a good time to be you. Check out my new book on AngelaDHenderson.com and take a journey to discover the many reasons why it's a good time to be you. Welcome back, everyone. We are with Miss Shemaya Vickers, and she is just sharing with us a beautiful story of just loss, and then she's regained, and now um, you are just doing some amazing things to just help other people, and in the midst of this, you've also found your passion. So tell us, what is it that you're doing? So I am a registered nurse as well as a nurse mentor now. Okay, so uh, what made you pick nursing? Well, uh, ironically, or I say divine, like we should say, or destined to be a family member or in-law, when we first got stationed in Georgia, um, spoken to me and told me that she sees me doing more because I love to take care of people. Yeah. And she said that I always needed something to stand on, not to just be a mom, because I felt like just being a mom was enough to be complete. And she was like, no, what can you stand on on your own two feet if something were to happen to your husband or anything? God yeah. forbid you need something to be able to provide and feel like your own woman. So I said, you know, that makes sense. And she said, I believe you would make an amazing nurse. Wow. Yeah. How yeah. beautiful, yes. That, yes. and that she spoke that into you. Yes. And so, um, obviously, you love it, yes. and you are an amazing yes. nurse. So <laughs> tell me a little bit about what you're doing with your nursing. So uh, outside of the bedside, I've started a, we, well, me and some friends have started a nurse mentorship where we are trying to inspire the nurses that whether they're starting in the beginning stages or later on of how to use our degrees in other, in other ways. Like you can be an entrepreneur, a nurse, you be multifaceted, inspire them, give them encouragement on this route to become a nurse if they have yeah. someone that's a nursing student, and just to give them back the experience and say that it's okay, you don't have to stay at the bedside. We can do so many things with our degrees. Wonderful. Yeah. Now, what is it that you currently do with your degree? Do you work so in I'm, a hospital? So I work at a hospital here okay. at Medical University, South Carolina, yeah. but I also have started my own IV hydration business. IV hydration. Correct. Okay, so share with us, <laughs> what is IV hydration? So this is pretty much where you can get a bag full of vitamins, whether it's uh, B12 or zinc, all the oh. things that we take 
with tablets. You could just get an IV and get it inserted. Seriously? Yes, and you could have that service, and in an hour you could be full of vitamins that you need to get you through oh your day. Um, if you feel like you're getting a little sick, boost your immune system, or just give you some energy to get through them, because, you know, we're so busy. We need that extra. Yeah. So, yeah. So you don't have to wait for it to be digested through no, your system. No, it's an instantaneous, because it's Man. going right through our blood system. Yes. That is yes. pretty interesting. Yes. That yes. is great. We need that for coffee, don't we? Yes. <laughs> Please. Right. <laughs> I love it. Yes. So now, um, what got you started into that business? Well, I it was a nursing network at the time, which yeah. I it, pretty much social media has been a blessing. I know it can be a curse sometimes, but it's been a blessing because yeah. it connected me to a network of nurses in Atlanta. Okay. I went to a conference there and they had different booths of different entrepreneurs at the time that are nurses that nice. found different ways to incorporate their degrees. So one had their own scrub business that she has her own scrub designs. That's beautiful. Yes. And then my mentors that introduced me to Ivy, I had no clue that we could do this. I know you yeah. could go to a doctor's office, but I didn't know that we could actually be the ones that are running these spas. Wow. With they call medical spas. A but medical spa. Yeah. So she introduced me and she said, yes, it's the easiest thing because this is something we do already as nurses. Yeah. But now we're providing vitamins and educating our clients on how to take care of themselves and incorporate this as a, as a use. I love it. Now, when you do it intravenously, um, how long does that last? Is it a daily thing or so is it So this is something or? that we recommend do once a month. Because you're month. yes, because the amount of vitamins that your body is introducing is going to start regulating. Yeah. So it's giving you better um, digestion for it versus whether you taking it by mouth. That is so, so yes, beautiful. Yes, Good yes, for you. Yes. Well, this is some interesting information. <laughs> Wonderful. Yes. Well, we're just so honored to have you with us today mm -hmm. and just to share where you've been to inspire and encourage other people that are out there. I mean, you're path has taken you in so many different directions. Yes. So when did you realize it was a good time to be you? I feel like I discovered that here in the latter years in my 30s. Yeah. Because, and I said, I know they say with time comes wisdom, but I understand my place in the world better mm -hmm. and knowing that it's okay that I didn't move as quickly as others. Because I feel like I felt inadequate already being an adopted kid and always being I'm going to say the nerdier child, whatever, <laughs> but I just didn't feel like I was like everyone else. Yes. They were already kind of set. They had their degrees. They didn't have kids. So I feel like that kind of slowed me down. But I was like, no, this is where I'm meant to be. Yes, ma'am. You know what? You're yeah. not like anyone else. You're you. And you're the only you we've got. And we yes. are so honored to get to know you. Yes. So how about at the count of three, okay. we let everyone out there know it's a good time to be okay. you, okay? okay? One, two, three. It's, it's a, a good, good time, time to, to be, be you. drip hydration, just go to vickers.shamaya at gmail.com. That's vickers, V-I-C-K-E-R-S dot shamaya, S-H-O-M-I-Y-A-H at gmail.com. And remember, it's a good time to be you.